Assistant Secretary of the Navy under President Woodrow Wilson, Franklin Roosevelt was a strong proponent of American intervention in World War I. Years later, President Franklin Roosevelt agreed on war plans with Winston Churchill before Pearl Harbor, as he plotted to involve the United States in World War II. Roosevelt and Churchill are pictured here aboard the USS Augusta in August 1941. Their first move became known as Operation Torch, the 1942 Allied invasion of neutral French North Africa. Roosevelt's top general, George Marshall, openly opposed this idea. As a result, President Roosevelt issued a rare direct order for the invasion. General Marshall wanted to direct all resources to England to prepare for an invasion of northern France and a direct push to Berlin. If American resources had not been diverted to North Africa and then Italy, an invasion could take place in 1943 rather than 1944. However, delaying this landing may have been the objective. Winston Churchill was often quoted that he preferred to let the Germans and Russians slaughter each other for as long as possible. One can only speculate about President Roosevelt's secret motives. Did he want a quick, sure victory for public relations? Did his New York banker friends want to recover lost investments in North Africa? Did he fear Vinci France might actively join the war effort on the Axis side? Did he plan to secure military bases or even new colonies after the war? The Operation Torch landings were successful since the French were surprised, along with the rest of the world. Many French units resisted the invasion, causing over a thousand American casualties. While the French generals eventually agreed to become allies, they might change their mind if the tide turned. As a result, most American units remained as garrison troops along the entire coastline to maintain order and keep an eye on the armed French forces. The stated objective of the landing was to trap German and Italian forces in Africa. The British Eighth Army had routed them in Egypt just before Operation Torch began, and the defeated Axis forces were streaming back into Libya. However, Torch did not land forces in Tunisia. The French general there was uncertain, so chose neutrality and pulled his units into the mountains. As a result, the French abandoned their fortifications facing Libya, known as the Marath Line, which were built to deter an Axis attack. This was fortunate for the fleeing Axis forces who occupied these fortifications. When the pursuing British forces attacked, they were repelled with many losses. A long flanking movement proved successful, but the Axis unit simply fell back to another fortified line at Wadi Akirat. German forces from Libya continued north to the excellent port of Tunis, which was much closer to its supply hub in Italy. Tunisia is mountainous, which provides outstanding defensive positions. Axis forces in Tunisia were now within range of air support from Sicily. Hitler was excited about this development and dispatched another panzer division directly to Tunisia. Axis aircraft operating from both Tunis and Sicily might be able to close the central Mediterranean to Allied ships. Because of this unexpected development, the Allies attempted to race forces to Tunisia from Algeria. But roads were poor and distances great. Eventually, an ad hoc force of British, American, and Free French forces assembled and attacked the newly arrived German forces in Tunisia. These Allied units were tired and inexperienced, whose only air support came from Malta 200 miles away. The Germans were better equipped, experienced, and had more aircraft based closer to Sicily. The Axis forces repulsed the attack, then counterattacked and routed the Allied forces. This led to the famous battle at Kasserine Pass where the Germans overran American units, destroying hundreds of tanks and causing thousands of casualties. The Allies fled while the Germans rounded up thousands of POWs. This was a big shock to senior Allied command, who blamed several unit commanders. The Allies realized that it would, with great naval superiority and newly built forward air bases in Algeria, they could choke off Axis supplies coming from Sicily. There was no need for a bloody assault to dislodge 300,000 German and Italian troops dug into the Atlas Mountains. Operation Flax was launched, 
an air and sea campaign to interdict the Axis supply line from Sicily. It managed to sink around 30% of all Axis supplies destined to Tunisia. Moreover, it sunk Axis ships that could not be replaced and the huge Axis forces in Tunisia soon ran out of ammunition and fuel. It became obvious to the Axis forces that Africa was lost, yet German high command refused to allow the evacuation to Sicily until it was too late. As a result, 250,000 German and Italian soldiers had no choice but to surrender. This was a great Allied victory, but a bloody unnecessary mess. The Allies should have skipped Operation Torch and just used its naval power to blockade Libya. This would have been difficult given the German air power based in Sicily. Therefore, the obvious solution was to invade Sicily in 1942, to take full control of the central Mediterranean and choke off supplies to Axis forces in Africa, as was done in 1943 with Operation Husky. The British 8th Army suffered 13,650 casualties and lost 500 tanks breaching the German defenses in the Second Battle of El Amin and then crawling across Libya, only to encounter Axis forces and fortifications in Tunisia. All of this was unnecessary, since much of this British force in Egypt could have landed in Sicily to cut the main supply line for the Axis forces at El Alamein. The American forces that landed in North Africa could have landed directly on Sicily instead. There were fewer Axis forces in Sicily in 1942. By 1943, Axis forces in Sicily included another 60,000 Germans added after Tunis fell, plus 50,000 who were evacuated from Tunis. These forces further fortified the island before Operation Husky. Over 350 Allied warships took part in Operation Torch, plus 500 transports, while the Axis only had 50 in the Mediterranean, mostly submarines. The Allies clearly had the necessary naval superiority for a 1942 landing at Sicily, which would be easier to protect and sustain compared to the torch landings where forces were strung out over hundreds of miles. The Allies lost 16 ships in the torch landings, partly because the Germans sent 25 subs from the North Atlantic down to the Casablanca area, where Allied forces were strung out along the beach. Air superiority would have been a concern, yet the torch operation had six battleships and 11 aircraft carriers that could have protected the landing at Sicily, along with the British airfield at nearby Malta that could have been flooded with Allied aircraft. Nevertheless, a prime objective of the landing would be to quickly seize air bases in Sicily to deny their use by the Axis and their use by Allied squadrons who quickly would arrive. This was certainly viable, as proven by Operation Stone Age, which occurred just a week after the torch landings began. This was a convoy of three cruisers, ten destroyers, that escorted four cargo ships from Alexandria all the way to the island of Malta, just off the Sicily coast. This was successful, with only one cruiser slightly damaged. A 1942 invasion of Sicily was less risky than torch, because more French troops might have put up, put up a bigger fight, while more forces flew in from southern France to join them. The French fleet at Toulon might have set sail too. On day two of Operation Torch, the French submarine La Tonnette fired four torpedoes at the aircraft carrier USS Ranger off Morocco. Luckily, all missed. There was also concern that Axis-leaning Spain may join the war if the Allies attempted to surround Spain. It could seize a strategic British base at Gibraltar and close the strait. Allied generals were so concerned about this that they added the seizure of Casablanca to invasion plans to provide a port with direct access to the Atlantic. The advantage of skipping the pointless North African adventure and going straight for the throat at Sicily is so obvious that many Allied officers probably argued for this idea. No fighting was necessary in Africa since the occupation of Sicily would cut off the main supply hub and Axis forces would be forced to surrender without a fight. Operation Torch was not a blunder to be blamed on the military, but remains an unexplained objective for Roosevelt and Churchill that caused 76,000 American and British casualties.